Okay, I believe we're live now. I'm not sure. Okay, I'm not sure. Hopefully you can hear me, everybody out there. I invited a few. Hang on, okay. We got one viewer. I wanna to talk to you too, because um, we need to talk about getting you on the show because I know that you have your business going on too. So yeah, after the show, I wanna to talk to you. And it is 6.30. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, sometimes, you know, it's hard to get viewers when you're going live. But let me tell you, I've been showing up and showing out when it comes to um, the show on YouTube. You guys watch it. We have over on all the shows that we've done. We have over, I want to say, a thousand viewers. Hey, so I thank you. Um, we had a client that was on here before, and her website numbers jumped. So, you know, that let me know, hey, that's what's up. Because what I want to do, um, I want to put a platform out there for women in business. Um, we might do something for the brothers for Father's Day. So, um yeah, I'm going to check you out. I'll check you out. We'll probably do something like that. You know, I can't leave the brothers out. But I still want to say thank you to everyone. Remember, Mother's Day is May 9th. And that's next Sunday. Yeah, that is next Sunday. Don't worry, Mama. I got you a gift. Don't worry. And if you don't have your mother's gift, I'm telling you, this is the candle right now that I have going on. This right here is $15. Hit me up. Usually going for 20. And today we have a very special guest. I've known this young lady since she was in elementary school. I met her when she was in elementary school. And then I seen her again when she was working at, I want to say it was Panera Bread. You know, she was in college. And now, boom, this young lady is now married. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's married now. She has a child, but one thing that we have in common is that we've had a miscarriage. So here today, we're going to kind of talk about it and some of the things that we go through because everybody is different. But one thing we all can agree on, I don't care if you black, white, Asian, African, Jamaican, European, I don't care. One thing that we can all agree on, when you have that loss, not only do your, does your body go through a physical change, it kind of does something to your mental, even if it's just for one minute. So let me invite her on. Let's see. I sent you an invite. And like I say, whether it's one of you viewing two, or even a million of you. Thank you so much. Hey, Gordy. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. I was just telling everybody that I met you when you were in elementary school. Yes, and yes. Then I seen you at Panera Bread, and now I'm looking at you, and I'm like, girl, <laughs> God got you in position, honey. I'm telling you. Thank and you, you are yes, doing a did. wonderful job. Thank you. You're doing very wonderful. So, Miss Latoya, I would like for you to... Tell us about yourself. What made you start your organization? Okay, so um, I am a wife as of 2019. And oh uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and shortly after becoming a wife, I um, experienced a miscarriage, my second miscarriage, actually. Um, so mm -hmm. I actually should tell you about my first miscarriage. So my first mm -hmm. miscarriage was really... Um, very surprising. I found out that I was pregnant, like, unexpectedly. Um, and literally maybe, like, a week after, I experienced a miscarriage. Um, so I experienced, I was about six weeks, and then, um, I went through a massive, massive <laughs> deep depression. Um, mm -hmm. and through that depression, my depression didn't come in the form of not eating or 
um, just being sad and laying in bed. Mine was pretty much, you know, I, I started off laying in the bed, didn't want to get up, but I actually went to binge eating. So I had a very unhealthy, you know, relationship with food. So I started to binge eat and then I actually started to kind of become super functional. Um, I actually got laid off my job a couple months after that. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so I didn't, I never said that part of the story. Um, but yeah, I, get, I got laid off um, a couple months after having my first miscarriage. So I was really in a deep very sad place um thank god though i did find a job shortly after that mm -hmm. and then i kind of mm -hmm. went on like a life is too short type of binge and i just start mm -hmm. you know traveling um and you know from the outside looking in everybody just seen me go different places but they didn't know like now i'm really mm -hmm. mourning my angel baby and i was supposed to be a mom oh, so you know god. i'm using this type of stuff to you know cope and deal and I'm thinking like oh if I stay busy you know I'll be good um so then yeah, 2019 right. comes I get pregnant again shortly after my wedding and I end up miscarrying so when I found out mm -hmm. I was pregnant I was like you know what I'm not gonna be too happy I'm just gonna you know I'm just gonna try to pray um but I still didn't have enough faith. I didn't have faith at all, to be honest. Um, and then I ended up miscarrying three days later. But that was kind of a miscarriage where I didn't go into a deep depression automatically. I was just kind of like, okay, let's hurry up and try again. So I ended up getting right. pregnant two weeks later. And then during my first trimester, then I started to experience super high anxiety. Like, oh my God. Like, I didn't deal wow. with, you know everything I had to deal with. So I'm dealing with super high anxiety during my first trimester, which is normal after you have a miscarriage. Um, but then okay. it started to turn into depression. Like I wasn't showering. I was literally sleep all the time, trying to pass time by. Um, I, I became a little bit happier in my second trimester. But then the third trimester, you know, now I went, I'm going through this depression where I don't want to look good because I don't feel good. And I'm just trying to get it over with. And then, yeah, so when she came, you know, I was super excited. I was super happy, my husband and I. But then it turned into, like, postpartum anxiety <laughs> and postpartum depression. So then okay. I went through that, um, and I'm just now getting out of that. Um, and that kind of led to me starting I Am Sarah, which when I started I Am Sarah, um, I am, or Sarah comes from the Bible, um, Genesis mm -hmm. 17, um, where she got pregnant after dealing with infertility, you know, for years. Um, mm -hmm. And it's funny because the way that came up, um, I actually got tricked into, you know, hanging out with my mom's friend. She tricked me into coming to a random Bible study. And mind you, I hadn't been to church in maybe like two years. So I'm like, okay. What are you doing? <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and then in that Bible study, we were talking about grief. And this was shortly after my miscarriage, my second miscarriage. Um, so while we were talking about grief, um, you know, I just said, hey, you know, I recently went through a miscarriage. Um, and, you know, even though, you know, I didn't actually see a person die, I feel like I'm grieving. And yeah, then, yeah. you know, next thing you know, all these different women like, oh, yeah, I had a miscarriage. I had a stillbirth. Oh, yeah, I'm like... It's common. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. you know, I was so alone in my first miscarriage. So then they start mm -hmm. talking about the story of Sarah, and I'm like, who is Sarah, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And I had kind of stepped away from my Christian faith. Like, I was still a Christian, but I wasn't, you know, right. actually mm -hmm. going to church. Um, so, you know, then I went home, and I'm starting to look up Sarah, and I'm, like, looking up scriptures and sermons about Sarah, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, this, I will be Sarah. So I started writing it down. I will be Sarah. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, I will be pregnant. And then literally two weeks later, I, that's how I got pregnant. So that story really wow. stuck with me. And, like, it's so important for me to, like, with her, I have such a deep connection to her. Um, so then um, last year, you know, I'm just laying down, and I'm like, I just – I know that I have a purpose that's bigger than what I can see. And I have been Come praying on, and girl. praying, you know, and I have been praying, like, what is my purpose? I know I didn't go through two miscarriages, 
for no reason. Like, I'm the first mm-hmm. to have miscarriages on my mom's side of the family. Everybody has smooth pregnancies. I'm like, I mm-hmm. went through this for a reason. And because mm-hmm. I went through that, you know, something just clicked. Like, oh, I want to write a book called Dear Sarah. And then, you know, that's pending. And I'm like, but I want to do something now. Like, I want right, to do something right. now that's so influence people. And then there was I Am Sarah. So then I started I Am Sarah really to help people focus on the mental health aspect of going through miscarriages. Okay. Because, you know, it's not going to stop happening. But I think a lot of times we think that rainbow babies are like the answer to our happiness, and it's not. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's, it's actually healing and, you know, really going through that depression and learning how to cope because even if you get pregnant, it's not going away. <laughs> So, and it's funny yeah. that you said that because that's one reason I titled the show The Calm After the Storm instead yes. of The Rainbow After the Storm because thank God you got a beautiful rainbow baby, yes. which I got to see after this COVID is gone. Yes. But with me, I've had multiple miscarriages mm-hmm. and I went to a depression, you know, where I was like, God, why me? What's going on? Exactly. But even when a storm go on, when it calms down, that's when the rainbow comes. Exactly. So right now, after the storm, I'm still in my calming season. That's yeah. what I say. You know, you got to get your mental together. You got to get your spiritual together, you know, yes. and then the physical and then the financial. And thank God everything is flowing along. Yes. So that's, like I say, another reason why I call it the calm after the storm. Yes, I so love that. Next time, <laughs> next time I have the rainbow part, but you know, yes. right now I'm just... Looking at the raindrops come down. It's not a storm right now. Yes, yes. Now, what made you, I know that you said that they mentioned Sarah to you at yes. Bible study, but with every, or with the women that were in the Bible that had infertility issues, what made Sarah really stick out to you? Because I know I like First Samuel chapter one mm-hmm. with Hannah. What yeah, heard was it about Sarah that really stuck out to you? I think it was the funny part with her was the fact that she laughed at God when he said that she would be pregnant. And mm-hmm. it's so funny because when God plants certain visions in our heads, we like, how? You know, how is that? Yes. Yes. Like, I don't have any type of resources. So I think that the fact that she had she laughed and she didn't believe whatsoever and God still extended that grace to her like even though you don't believe I'm still gonna give you a son and I think that was something mm-hmm. that was like you know <laughs> like watch what I, watch what exactly. I do you just be still exactly. watch what I do exactly. <laughs> wow that is amazing now how did your husband react because a lot of times we never really look at the fathers, because they're going through yeah. a loss too. Maybe not physically, but mentally, you know, it could take a toll on them. How did he really take it? Or did you um, notice? You know what? The first miscarriage, I think he was trying so hard to be strong for me. And mm-hmm. I didn't even realize that he was going through a lot, like, until he came home from work while I was, you know, still grieving. And he was mm-hmm. like, yeah, you know, I had to leave work early because I just couldn't stop crying. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And my husband is really pretty nonchalant, real laid back. So for him to have that emotion, I was like, oh, my God, like, we have to focus on each other. Um, and That's yeah, funny. so he was very, very sad. And the second miscarriage, I think he went off my emotions. And, like, at the time, I was just so, we got to get pregnant again. Like, I kind of treated my second miscarriage more as a statistic rather than actually like actually losing a second angel so or gaining a second angel so okay did you look at in um into anything like did you have any infertility issues i know that you said that the women in your family had smooth sailing did you or your husband go and look at that or what was going on it's funny because now that i'm thinking about it god is so good because the saturday after so it was a funny timeline. Mind you, I got had my second miscarriage, and then literally two weeks later, without a cycle in between, I got pregnant. So, and I knew that could happen, but it was very rare. So, but in between that, I'm like texting the mid, uh, the midwife and saying I need to be tested. Like I need to be tested. She like, oh well, usually we want to wait to the third miscarriage. I said no, I'm not having the third miscarriage. 
I want right, to right. it, you know? I'm like, I shouldn't have to go through that in order to see what's wrong. So I end up testing, like, Monday, um, okay. doing my um, series of tests, and the results hadn't even come back before. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It's This is literally overlapping. So, like, Monday morning, I did the test. I went in at 7 a.m. before my new job. I did the test, and then literally I took a pregnancy test on my lunch break on the first day of work. So it was that same day, and I found out I was pregnant. So then I'm, like, extremely happy. I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, I'm pregnant. Um, and then literally that weekend, we had we had already scheduled an um, appointment with a fertility specialist. So I was okay. like, before we scheduled an appointment, like, within that two-week time span. So when I came to the fertility specialist, I'm like, yeah, I'm pregnant. He was like, how? You just had a miscarriage. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I am, you know? I was like, I right. did this research, and then he started going through my testing results, and he was like, oh, well, you might have antiphospholipid syndrome. They are going to have to do a second test. So what that is is a blood clotting disorder that prevents you from oh, wow. carrying a pregnancy. And I'm like, I never mm -hmm. had a blood clotting disorder ever in my life. Like, I never had blood clots. I didn't know where this was coming from. Um, so that mm -hmm. was the reason, and well, uh, the apparent reason um, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I started to do blood thinners throughout my entire pregnancy to maintain Lori. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, that's right, little Lori. Yes. How old is she now? She is nine months. <laughs> oh, my God. So her first birthday is, like, right around the corner. Yes, yes, yes. Are y'all prepared for that? <laughs> no, I'm I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do. I'm like I don't, like she's only one. She's literally never gonna remember it. But I'm like it's still her first birthday. So yeah, <sighs> I always say the first birthday is not for the child. It's for the parents exactly. to be able to say we survived one exactly. year. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um. Now you said that you had postpartum. When did you officially know that you had per postpartum? Because I knew that I had depression myself. Like you said, when I couldn't get out of the bed, I didn't even want to eat. And yeah. it was like, I started kind of not turning on my husband, but it was like every little thing is like, leave me alone. Close oh the blinds. I'm so you know. glad you said that because I thought I was the only one. I will say nope. that like around six months is when I was becoming a little bit more irritable, a little bit more snappier. Um, I remember just feeling like, oh, like, you know, and before I got pregnant, I was a pretty ambitious person. So I wanted to, I was losing weight. I was career oriented. I was just like super mm -hmm. focused on myself. So I started to mourn that and like, oh my gosh, like I'm not that person anymore. I don't know who I am. And then I would just randomly start crying. So then I'm like, okay, I text my doctor or I started looking up YouTube videos. I always go to YouTube. <laughs> And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm just saying, what is postpartum depression? Like, am I going through it? Like, I'm not feeling sad. I'm happy to see my baby. But then right. I learned mm -hmm. that, you know, postpartum depression is, it, it's, it's a spectrum. Sometimes it could go all the way to the extreme where you are suicidal. And sometimes it could just be, you know, really mild to where, uh -huh. you know, you're just, you have episodes of being sad. You get irritable. Even with your baby, you know, you stop, you don't want to hear them cry or, you know, you just kind of get a little angrier um, or you're just super quick to anger. Um, and then I realized, I realized that around January and then I just didn't really know what to do. And then around like March, I kind of was just, honestly, I just went into a time where I just needed to be alone. Like I needed to be alone. I needed, I realized that tired time is so important. Um, and that's why I didn't have, I didn't want to leave my daughter. Um, I felt super attached Aww. to her. So I was just like, I'm not having time for myself. And then not only that, I became a wife and a mom at the same time. So, um, wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So, you know, that was just a lot of pressure. So I felt like I was pouring from an empty cup and then I was just super sad. So I think that spending that time alone with God, actually, and really getting back into my faith, listening to sermons every single day. Mm -hmm. Then I start praying mm -hmm. for discipline to be disciplined in my spirituality. You know, pray for with health and fitness, but I wanted to be okay. a person that like woke up, read my devotion every single day, had time with God. So 
once I started getting into that groove of being disciplined, then I shortly started to, you know, take walks outside, enjoy the weather, um, eat healthier, like the foods, you know, really matter. And then shortly after I had some breakdowns and I'm like, okay, now I'm feeling like I want to be here. Like I'm feeling good about my situation. Yeah. I'm feeling good about being a mom and a wife. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm still oh, like, I'm still tired. Like, so I think that, you know, going through that was super important and vital for my growth, but it was hard. you know. Right. But, yeah. Right. That's one thing women also need to realize that you need to have a support system with you whether it's your husband. But I know you had a big support system because when I met you, I remember meeting your mom. Your mom was like, that's my baby, okay? So <laughs> yes. your mom wasn't going nowhere. So yes. how was that, you know, having your mom and your husband as your support system? Um, it was how was great. that? It was great okay. because, you know, I got an opportunity because my husband needed support too. You know, he needed right. his time to meditate. And adjust to being a father. I needed my time to adjust to being a mom and, you know, kind of know my identity in who I, like, in being a mom. And I think me and my husband both talked about, you know, losing ourselves and being parents and being husband and wife. Like, we forgot about ourselves. So when you have that, you know, you start to, you know, become unhappy. So I think that having him as a support system, me being his support system, us having our parents was absolutely amazing. Um, and we're mm -hmm. so blessed to have great grandparents on both sides. So, yeah, it good, was really good. Good, <laughs> good, good. Um, here's another question I want to ask you. What would you tell people to not say to a grieving mother or father? Because this is what I got tired of hearing. Oh, it just wasn't your time. Oh, maybe yes. there was something wrong with the baby. I don't care if the baby came out with one finger and one eyeball. Right. It's still my baby, you know. Exactly. So what are two things you would tell people to not say? And what are two things that you could, I guess you can use to counteract that? Um, I guess to say one, a positive. One, and this is so common, don't say it happens for a reason because I don't want to hear that. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, even if God has his reason, that's not your place as, you know, a human, don't say that because I'm grieving. Um, mm -hmm, two, mm -hmm. I would say, um, I would say, well, this is what I got from my, uh, one of my grand, my granddad. He's like, well, what's wrong with you? Don't say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, older, older people could be a little bit just, so I think that was something that was like, you know, don't ever say that to somebody who had just lost a baby. Um, and then I think that two things that you should say are um, definitely one, you know, I'm here for you. Simple, you know, simple. You don't have to tell me like, oh, I'm going to be doing this. Like, just say I'm here for you whenever you need. Um, and I think that, you know, those words are super important. And then two, I honestly, I think that somebody should say like, you are worthy, you are enough. And I think that is so common when you experience loss is because you sometimes don't feel worthy of a child. So mm -hmm. I think that hearing those words are super important for anybody that has lost a child, mother or father. It's beautiful that you said that, that you are worthy, because at one point, when I had lost the baby, I was like, he gave me the child, and we know that the woman is supposed to be the one that bears the fruit, you know, so it's like, what's going on? Is there something exactly. wrong with me? And exactly. it's like, people don't realize your words can truly affect somebody. Yeah. You, know, you might not see it, but behind closed doors, they crying, maybe even ready to commit suicide. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm remember, happy you did. And I remember my first miscarriage. It's funny. I wasn't even thinking about having a miscarriage. And then one of my mm -hmm. friends, I was just telling everybody, oh, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. And, like, somebody was just like, my coworker was like, yeah, you know, you don't want to tell everybody because you never know what will happen. And I'm like, I and I literally never even thought about a miscarriage. I was just so happy that I was pregnant. 
So when mm -hmm. I started, when I even heard those words, you know, I'm like, oh my God, now I'm doing research on miscarriage. And now I'm, mm -hmm. you know, watch out for this, watch out for that. So when it actually happened, I knew it was happening. So yeah, I definitely mm -hmm. feel like people need to watch out for <laughs> what they say. Mm -hmm. Watch their mouth. That's yes. what it is. <laughs> now with Lori, are you kind of strict with her? Like, don't hold my baby. Don't touch my baby. Because I already told my mom and my husband, I said, I'm going to have a list. I'm going to text you. Oh, my uh, God. No, they can't hold my baby. They can't hold my baby. Yes. Are you kind of like I literally was like that. And that's why I said I definitely suffered from, like, postpartum anxiety, which is so uh -huh. real. I didn't think I had, like, I didn't even think it existed. But I was so, like. Okay. Me and Rico, like, we definitely prioritize date nights. But when I tell you I was shorting them two hours nights, like, we showing up on time. When we come home, like, I was so, like, anxious. I didn't even want to leave her with him for more than an hour because I'm like, she needs me. Like, yes, I, I was really bad. So, I, <laughs> yeah, it was really bad. But then I think that when I went through the depression, I needed that time. And it just forced me to have that time away from her but yeah it was i was extremely <laughs> over the top um yeah but I mean, like the most commercial just wait till y'all had y'all second one you were like here yeah mm -hmm. yes, everybody <laughs> keeps telling me that everybody keeps telling me that and i mean shoot Lori is getting into her stage where she crawling and touching stuff so now i'm like hey mm -hmm. you want some time with her sure <laughs> <laughs> Now you trying to pass her on my right. <laughs> She's staying up longer. Yeah. Um, do you plan on having any more, you and your husband? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I actually we were talking about having a second shortly after she turned one. But you know, uh -huh. I think that after coming out of the depression, I kind of just want a little bit more time before having another one because when you get pregnant and you're trying to get pregnant it's extremely stressful to even have to deal with you know going through the first trimester so I kind of want a little bit of mental freedom now that I'm getting a grip but yeah I we want about two more so oh wow yeah Girl, you're still young. well see that's probably a bad phrase to say that you're still young because no. I'm getting older and I'm looking yeah. like I just want one okay I told yeah. my husband I might just squeeze you out one it used to be about four but Mike can get you one yes. okay we'll see. yes yeah, my cutoff I, time is forty. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, we were talking about at one point we talked about four, but I think like once Lori got here, we were like, yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it, it changed throughout my entire pregnancy. My first trimester, and I was like having nausea. I said, yeah, this is the only kid. And then second trimester, it was easier, and I'm like, okay, I can do this one more time. So <laughs> it always changes, but definitely another one. <laughs> Watch that third one gonna be. Oh, yeah, mm hmm. Yeah, I forgot to tell you. You remember that yes. night? So y'all probably gonna have three. I always tell people you're gonna have one more than what your yes. what you think you're supposed to have. You gonna have oh, one more goodness. like this. It happened. <laughs> okay, you remember that time the kids was at mama's house? Yep, it happened. <laughs> right, right, right. Oh my goodness, yes. Now, um. Why did you want to help others? Even though this is what you were going through. I mean, we are, me and you know why you wanted to help others, you yeah. know, because your testimony is not for you. It's for somebody else. But in your own words, why did you start your organization to help others? Well, I, for me, I knew that, well, first off, during my first miscarriage, I literally felt alone. Like, I felt like nobody had went through this. And all of I was probably, like, 22, 23. So nobody had went through this. Everybody just looking like, I don't know how to support you, you know. And I, I felt like, okay, let me go to Facebook groups. So then on Facebook groups, you know, all you see is miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage. And that can be really overwhelming and just like just a repetitive reminder of what you mm -hmm. went through, even on your good days. So I kind of thought like, you know, after my second pregnancy or after my second miscarriage, when I got pregnant, I had like a random breakdown at work and I was just super sad. So then I just randomly called a therapist. Like, literally Google, like, went to um, therapy for black girls um, and just looked up a therapist, called her, and she was like, I can talk to you tonight. And then from that point, you know, I started to tell her everything I went through. And I didn't even know I went through a lot. Like, I was just so used to 
something happening and I'm just continuously going. Um, and then I started to focus on my mental health. And then I realized a lot of the ways that I was dealing with life and dealing with my miscarriages weren't healthy. So then right. from that point, you know, I had already knew I went through those things for a reason. I already okay. knew I okay. had a purpose and I knew I wanted to help people. Like I knew I wanted to help women specifically because I had already been involved in community service and everything. But mm-hmm. like from that point, I was like, you know, it needs to be other kinds of support besides other women going through miscarriages because they might mm-hmm. not handle their miscarriages or losses the right way. Like they could be like me and binge eat or, you know, just continuously try it like until and go on, you know, autopilot, really not focusing on the mental health. So I wanted right. to be the person that like closed that gap, you know, let me find some therapists that specifically focus on miscarriages and grief and loss. So then that way, you know, people would have a somebody to go to. Like, oh, okay, I can go to this person, you know, when I experience a miscarriage. We can talk about self-worth. We can talk about, you know, you don't, a lot of times, you know, you need to focus on, you need a professional to help you out of that. That's right. You know, and it's easy to talk to other people and talk to other people going through the same thing. It's good to have somebody to relate to, but not all the time, Mm -hmm. like they might not necessarily help you. So I Mm -hmm. wanted to be the person to tell you, like, you know, it's other resources and you should, you know, look and pay attention to this mental health. And I don't think people do Mm -hmm. that really, you know, it's already Mm stigmatized. So to even focus on, and then miscarriages and loss is already something that's not talked about. So right, right. I'm like, and it's so common. Yeah. I'm like, we need to connect this because the women go through it in silence. And, you know, I actually realized I didn't even, I think my grandma had actually told me during my first miscarriage that she experienced a stillbirth from a car accident. And I'm just like, why didn't she ever tell me this? Like, I'm learning about it when I experienced a loss. And for me, it's like, I'm just wondering how you dealt with that to even continuously go through life and just say, oh, I'm okay, you know? So I definitely, that was super important to me to, just really help women, you know, focus on the mental health aspect of going through that type of loss. Okay. Okay. We had a question. It scrolled up. I can't scroll back down from Fran. It said, did you have a natural childbirth? Um, like natural without C-section or, well, I had a C-section. Um, so I'm not sure if that, if it she met vaginal or with medications, but I did end up having a C-section. Um, I had to get induced um, because her heart rate was acting crazy, and then I had an emergency C-section. So, okay, okay, yeah. Um, I want you to also mention your website and some of the merchandise that you have too on yes. your website because yes. I did see that you have bracelets now with T-shirts. I'm like, oh my god, yes. go ahead, girl. <laughs> Um, yes, so it is www.imsarahg.com. So it's S A R A H, uh, just to spell Sarah. Um, and yes, we have a God Plus Therapy collection and a Sarah, a Mama Sarah collection. The Mama Sarah collection pretty much celebrates angel motherhood because a lot of times we disqualify ourselves from being a mom, and regardless, when you find out you're pregnant you automatically taking care of the child whether that's oh i'm not drinking anymore i'm eating this type of food i'm not drinking coffee like you are automatically a nurturer so i wanted to celebrate angel motherhood so that is the mama sarah collection um and then the god plus therapy collection i that's one of my favorites um it's celebrating um using god and therapy because you can't really have one without the other um, because you know, God blessed us with these type of tools to help us. That's right. So, That's right. Yes. So yes. you know, I wanted to you know celebrate using both. You know, it's not only about mm-hmm. just pray it away. Like no, you know, you pray and you go do the work. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have any advice for any moms and dads that may have had a miscarriage or that are trying to have children? any well for future mom and dads do you have any advice for them um yes i would say for people that are trying to have kids um i would say and 
the power of the tongue is super important. Um, so, you know, all God needs is the faith the size of a mustard seed. So just try to, you know, really think about times when God has come through in other parts of your life and use it for what you're trying to do. So if God randomly blessed you with $20 because you needed it, like think about those times and say, if he did it then, like he can do it again. And even look at other people, you know, like myself who have got pregnant and who struggle, but seeing the rainbow at the, you know, at the end of the tunnel. Um, And then for people who have went through a miscarriage, I would say, you know, really focus on knowing, loving yourself, you know, focus on being disciplined with loving yourself because loving yourself is literally a practice. It's not Mm -hmm. easy. Um, So if that means, you know, getting dressed, even though you work from home or you're not going anywhere, if that means, you know, booking a massage, like practice those type of things um, and really journal. Like I didn't realize how good journaling was, but journal your feelings out. How do you feel every day? Even if it's a sentence, I feel good, you know, get those things out. And I think that would even be something good to do with your husband, because a lot of times men don't Mm -hmm. express themselves. So, you know, I think that men even doing that, y'all doing it together, checking in on each other, like that is something that's super important. And I actually wish me and my husband would have did that during our first miscarriage, like checked in. Mm -hmm. Hey, how are you doing? Because a lot of times we do forget about how men feel and men don't even, men suppress their feelings. So you don't even know. They just want to be there for you because they love you. So definitely do like check-ins. Um, and I would honestly say maybe even schedule like a monthly therapy appointment, you know, even just something, even if it's not a, a therapy appointment, maybe get you a support group, maybe get you, um, you know, focus, try to have people that are there for you. And if you don't want to, you know, tell people that you experienced a miscarriage, it's a huge community of people who, you know, are going through the same thing that you are. So Mm-hmm. And like you say, Facebook is not always good. I'm telling people because you got different spirits that be out there too. Yes. Okay. Yes. And sometimes when people say, "Oh, I'm praying for you," you know, they may be praying that you never ever get pregnant again. Exactly. exactly. So be careful who you you know talk to. And exactly. That's the reason I'm so happy I was able to talk with you and that you have the organization now. You know, because I know. I know how your spirit is, you yes, know. I know yes. you. I know you're right with God. You and your husband. <laughs> and I don't want to keep you much longer, but I want to say thank you so much. Yes, um, if there's, thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. If there's any last words that you would like to say, go ahead and again put your website out there. I'll make sure I'll post it. Mm-hmm. Um, it will be on YouTube sometime this week. So go ahead and take it away. Well, I just want to tell everybody who is going through a miscarriage, who have been through a stillbirth or any type of loss, who are, who is experiencing infertility, that it will be okay. You are enough. Um, Be kind to yourself because oftentimes we blame ourselves and it's not our fault. Even if it's something that our body is experiencing, everything is working for the good. So, you know, just you know, be kind and be patient. So Amen. And again, congratulations Thanks. and happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day to you. Oh, thank you. I tell everybody, I say, my child was so perfect and so good. God called him back God home. And that's what exactly. I always say. Yes, I love that. Yes. And then think it was just another coping mechanism. You know, I still talk sometimes. Be like, hey, baby, I miss you. But I say, yes. no, my, dad, my child was so good. God said, no, you coming back home, baby. Yes, and I'm exactly. Like, yes, baby. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that's the thing, you know, life is short. We only think about life being short with people who have lived life. Life is short, even when God, you know, might plant a baby in you. You know, you carried that baby for however long, and it's still a baby. It's an angel. So, yes. Right. Well, you'll know when I'm pregnant, because I'm put on every status every two minutes. Oh, yes. my God. I want chicken wings. Oh, my God. This <laughs> oh, my God. I think that was a cute. A yes. kid. No, that was just gas. <laughs> Yes, exactly. <laughs> but congratulations Thank again. You. I'm proud of you, Queen. You and your king and your little princess. Thank you. <laughs> proud of you. Thank you, everybody. And yes. when that book comes out, let me know. I want a signed copy. And you I can come will. back and talk about it. 
I will. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Every first of the month, we'll be here. See you later. <laughs> See ya. Thank you, everybody. How you get out of here? I'm, I'm going to sit here and be talking to y'all. I don't know how to get out of here. I'm going to start dancing or something. Y'all won't see that. Okay.